G'day. My name is Wilfred West from Lostport, Victoria, Australia. Today's date is the 10th of 7th, 2015, and it's 28 to 12 in the morning. And you're at the Lostport Surf Beach Lookout. And today I want to talk about um, our food laws. Um, I've done a little bit of research in that. It's what, what, when you, like I go to suit say coals or something like that, and I buy bacon that's made from local and imported ingredients. I mean, I, I want to have our system more simplified um, to know. So if I want to buy a product, I want to know, hey, is that product owned by an Australian company? B, is that product Australian made? Right. In other words, if the product is even partly owned by a foreign company, it should be, has some say in there, or I don't know, I don't know if that's, this could be a percentage. It has to be, it's 100% Australian owned, it should be say 100% Australian owned. Um, then Australian made. Now, does the product, all the ingredients in that product, right? Like, if I could buy Smith's chips, right? I want to know where every single ingredient comes from, right? I want to know where the bags are made. Are they made here in Australia or are they made overseas? Um, I want to know where the ingredients for the chips come from. The chips, I know they're saying they're Australian, but they're Australian grown, Australian, Australian farmers. If it's true, that's fine, they can keep them intact. I want to know the ingredients, where all those ingredients come from. Right? Are they, does the salt come from Australia or does it come from China? This is something I'd like to see on food package. Not just fresh food, I want to see it on all packaging across the board. Yeah, it costs a little bit more, but then as a consumer, I can turn it around and say, okay, I want to buy this apple. Okay, it's a Tasmanian apple, so therefore it should be called Tasmania. And yeah, okay, now if there's any sprays or additives put onto that apple or waxes put onto that apple before it gets here, I want to know about that. Okay, I want to have that on a label somewhere or be able to go, okay, yeah, that's on the box in safe ways. It's got a little label saying this is what's been done to the apple. So I know if that's 100% fresh, there's nothing done to it organic, or there's something else that's been added to it. Okay? Same with bananas. Bananas come from Queensland. Most of our bananas come from Queensland. I want to know if that's 100% Australian, first of all, if it is from Queensland. Second of all, I want to know any pesticides or treatments done to that particular banana to know where it's done. If I want to buy um, some food like uh, uh, spices or anything like that, like garlic paste or anything like that, I want to know where they come from and what's been done to them. Like a lot of the garlic paste I see out there is either from, uh, one's from Thailand I think, and the rest are from China. I think they're so-called Australian made one, but if you look at the ingredients it actually comes from China. Um, which I'm going to have to find the product again and show, show, on, show on those ones. But, this is the problem with flakes, it's like bacon, made from local and imported ingredients. Where's the local ingredients? Here's the local ingredients, the pig, or the plastic that comes from, or the water inside the thing, right? or the salt inside, okay? We do not know. This is something I'd like to see our government, federal government, to make a federal law, not state or council, federal law stating these things. I right? have a very basic view to sit down with experts around them in Australia to do that. Okay? Um, now, on top of this, I'm, this comes into another interesting topic I want to talk about since we've got time to. Is a TPP. Right? Um, yeah, there is uh, some of the clauses in there. I think that if you allow any country, any company, to sue a government for changing the law to benefit the people of that place, or to say, hold on, wait, the plain, perfect example, um, the tobacco industry, they're suing Australia at the moment because they, we put that thing in place right, to stop people um, basically killing themselves, really, just to cover up the pay packaging. They don't need the appetite. Their product kills people. They know that. Everybody knows that. It's simple. It's true. It's scientifically proven. Okay, I'm, a, I'm an ex-smoker. Okay, so I can talk, I'm, I'm quite happy to talk about these things as well. But that law 
then supersedes, say, into McDonald's. Right? Where we find a practice in McDonald's hypothetically, using a hypothetical scenario here, um, that could cause harm or death to people, like putting MSG or something like that into food, putting something that makes their food highly addictive, which it already is. But it's scraping the um, lines of things. And then the, then the government realised, hold on, what they're doing is, might not be um, a law wrong, but it might be morally wrong or something else wrong. And they have to stop that because A, it's just destroying the people, um, and B, it's destroying the environment. So they put laws in place to say, oh, we want you to control the business so you are not killing the people you're serving, or, and also destroying the environment. We want you to do this. They don't, shouldn't have the right to turn around and sue the government for loss of income. To go down that pathway is to say, it's like America, that we go down Americans' pathway. And our government, if you allow this to happen, then you should be voted out of office. Both parties. I would actually vote Green. I would actually vote Bob Catter. I would actually vote um, Tony Windsor in. I would actually vote um, the Tasmanian woman in, uh, Jackie something. I would actually even vote for. I'd, I'd, I'd vote um, Clive Palmer in to be Prime Minister if any of those people said no to these laws. Right? I'd actually support them 100%. So if you, Tony Abbott, we're talking about him and the Liberals, sign off on this agreement and Labor passes this agreement through the lower house and upper house with those particular things in there where a company can sue a country, then you are selling us, right? Australian people down the shithole and going down the same pathway as America is, where the big business will eventually own you to, will own the political parties, will own the Liberals and they'll own the Labor. And the only way to get into politics is to become like Donald Trump or what's his name, Clive Palmer or somebody else like that who's got millions behind them to do that or get supported by businesses to do that. We do not want to go down that pathway. And if Australian people should wake up and see this right, and say no to that pathway, that also brings me down to another new thing the government wants to do in a couple of years time. 2017 or 2018, I'm not quite sure. I want to bring a referendum about um, recognising the Australian First People, okay, the Aboriginals. Yes, they were here for thousands of years before us. Yes, they come across a land bridge. The scientists have proven that, they've found skulls that of a different race of humans were here before the Aboriginals, okay? Which, in a sense, we're all the same. Even the Aboriginals, we're the same as them. Simple as that, I don't care what you say. If you look at their name, we all come from the same place on Earth, okay? So, I, can, I got no problem recognising Aboriginals saying they were here before us. It's no, no big deal. I'm Australian, they're Australian, that's all that matters, okay? I don't care if you're born here, I don't care if your ancestors can trace their history back here 10 million years, and I don't care if you're a migrant. Right, and you choose to come here as a person. To me, you are all Australians, okay? That's how I look at being Australian, is, regardless of what colour your, your colour your skin is, or your ancestral history, or if you came here by boat or plane or whatever, and you've become Australian citizen, to me, you are Australian, okay? You're not the first, you're not the last, that's it, you're Australian. And that's how I look at life, okay? Now, if the Constitution, as one person put it, I think they said they want to um, have an Aboriginal party in government. If they put that in the part of the, as part of the referendum, I'm going to vote no against it straight away. Because, hey, we have an elected system. We have a system that's perfectly set up. I don't want to have, well, no, sorry, we're trying to, now we've been here for over 200 years. We want to have our own little party in government, permanent party, as a Chinese voice. Or same with the Indian or Greek or whatever. It's pointless, it's a stupid idea. Okay? If that ever gets put to the constitution as part of the constitutional referendum, I'm gonna know it's gonna get voted out. What has been put into there is very simply saying we do recognise the Aboriginal people. We're here first. Right? They did come here first, that's fair enough, that's logical. Can't deny that. And leave like that. We've got to make it so it's the ones where they can't where they can't use that constitution then to 
say oh, we we want more land or we want to control more of Australia or we want to have more say in politics. If you want to have more say in politics, put your leaders up for vote. Get them into the houses, get them into the lower house, get them into the Senate. Get their voices, get your voice heard that way through our Australian democratic system okay, of voting. Do that. Okay, then you might consider that that's part of the way I look at it. The problem we face uh, is this constitution is very tricky as, you know, as, as, um, as one, one of the um, Aboriginals say he was doing it. And so we've got to find that balance where it's in there, but it's not going to be able to use the law against anybody else to take their land off them or to try to take more land or try to claim rights in the government. These are things that are going to be very tricky and very, very, far, uh, very balanced. Now, yes, they have the traditional lands. A lot of Aboriginals, they were nomads. So traditional lands could be basically from the top of Queensland to basically um, New South Wales. That could be their whole traditional land because they travelled. They lived on the coast part of the year. Um, then they travelled in, they travelled inland, you know, even in the Victorian ones. They didn't never had a fixed, as far as I know, they never had a fixed um, location. Okay, never had a fixed set of land saying this is our traditional land. No, they might have religious sites, right? If you could call it that, where they did their ceremonies every year, or they did, um, or well, they came together as a group of people and they talked about things. But to classify as a land, well, as far as I'm aware, they travelled around Australia. They weren't fixed. They were nomadic race of people. And they they weren't a fixed race of people. Only white men came along and made them fixed race of people. Right? Which is kind of you know, interesting in the way we, we as humans progressed and stuff like that. But um, as I said before, we'll see what, see what they say in the referendum. And um, they've got, what, two or three years before they make their decision up. Um, before they put it to the Australian people. And we'll let the government see what happens there. They might not be in power. But Labor's also trying to do this little bipartisan thing. Now, um, yeah, that's about it today. I talk quite a bit about a lot of different things, haven't I? Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and um, please leave any feedback, and um, let me know what you think about my comments. My name is Wilfred West from Locksport, Victoria, Australia, signing off. Thank you for watching my videos, and all comments are welcome. You'll have a great day now.